All right, so let's talk about the principle of superposition. Now, uh, basically, when you have more than one wave and they're coming together, right, the principle of superposition says that when these waves meet at a point, let's say over here, okay, whatever displacement you get at this point will simply be the vector sum of the displacements of each of the waves that come in. So, for example, if let's say this wave had a displacement of 5 units and this wave had a displacement of 4 units, then you would produce something over here with a displacement of 9 units. Okay, now, uh, of course, I can also see this uh, if the waves come in opposite to each other like so, right? If this was then 5 units and this was then minus 3 units, then of course what you're going to get is something like this, 5 plus minus 3 a resultant wave of only two units. So this is essentially what the principle of superposition says. Very simple. Now, if I have two waves that just meet at a point, and we're going to talk about incoherence here, right? Waves can come in uh, many, many shapes and sizes, right? So when I say that, it means that they could come in different frequencies, wavelengths, speeds. Now, as long as they are the same type of wave, Right, as long as they're the same type of wave, they will superpose. But if they are like this, or they don't have uh, the same wavelength or frequency or speed, you're going to get a lot of randomness. And it's not nice to study that. So uh, what we typically do in the A-levels is that we study the superposition of coherent waves. And so when we say that waves are coherent, we mean that they can maintain a constant phase difference with each other. So, for example, what you see over here, these are coherent waves, okay? So, you see, they may not be aligned, but if I come in with some phase difference here, the key thing is that this phase difference is maintained throughout the wave, as you can see. Bear in mind that uh, coherent waves do not need to have the same amplitude. So, for example, this wave could have something like this. It could be a wave of much smaller amplitude, and it would still be coherent with the red wave, as you can see. So, what is so special about in uh, superposing coherent waves? So, if I have two coherent waves, and they meet at a point, right? Let's say they meet here with some phase difference. Now, because they maintain this phase difference, then this phase difference will always be the same. And so we say that if two coherent waves meet at a point with a phase difference of zero or some even multiple of pi, then the waves come in aligned with each other, like so. And so we get something called constructive interference. You see uh, a uh, just generally a larger amplitude wave. And so this is what we call constructive interference. Okay. And of course, you can also guess now if the waves come in with a phase difference of pi or some odd multiple of pi, then what you get will be something like this. One wave could come in like this. Another wave could come in like that. And they're going to kill each other. And so you perpetually get a wave of smaller amplitude, and we call this destructive interference. So the key difference between interference and superposition, right, is that interference, you can think of it as a nice little subset of superposition. It's basically the superposition of coherent waves. And why we like to study interference is because the pattern that you form is going to be quite steady, and easy to study. We'll look at that in more detail in uh, future videos.